Oh man, that's horrible. What's up everybody? Welcome back to another episode of what we're currently calling C-Suite Unfiltered, but I think we're... <laughs> the lifespan we're, of that. <laughs> we're beta testing. Uh, Mike and I were on a plane and... Uh, Liz, um, who some of you know, who works at Augusta with us, she asked me what the name of our podcast was, and it did not uh, test well with the people that were sitting around us. Yeah, the guy's like, "What? what what's that? What did he say? Is that your name? He said, does, your, does your name start with a C? <laughs> and I was like, no. He was like, so why is it C-suite? And I was like, well, uh, he's not the target audience, so. <laughs> but uh, that's what the, that's the name we're going with. Uh, so how, how's it going, man? Good, how's man. Your, how's good. your week been? Dude, I don't know how we always... Start recording on Fridays. There's such a low energy on Friday <laughs> evening. Trying to bring it. Trying to bring it. I got a nice uh, lavender coffee. So lavender coffee. That sounds horrible. Yeah, my wife hated it. I actually really like it. <laughs> I think it's good. It's hey, good. eggnog. No eggnog coffee at Starbucks now. Really? Yeah. Why? Because of the no union idea. or? <laughs> uh, I, I would imagine it's because of fluctuation of cost. It's heavy, obviously, but they have cream and all sorts of things. So, but no yeah. eggnog. No eggnog products. Are they gonna do eggnog drinks? It's which is on Christmas, bro. I guess. <laughs> Dude, what is our world coming to without eggnog? I saw a Jimmy Fallon uh, meme, and he said, uh, "He said the Starbucks cups. It's it's been a rough couple of years when the Starbucks holiday cups are good news." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> like, people were like, "Yeah, Starbucks cups." He's like, "Oof." Every year they come out, it's just like some big political something pops up because yeah. of it. Now it's of course like what. November, the first of November, they all came out. Yeah. Right yeah. after Halloween. Here's a hot take yeah, for you. Let's go. Why in the world would, now we just passed Halloween. Yeah. Um, what was, what's it called? The Spirit Store? Yeah, Spirit Halloween. Spirit Halloween. Why would they not do a, a, a second leg of that and just call it the Spirit of Christmas? Spirit Christmas. Like, yeah, it's the smart. Spirit of Christmas. Yeah. The like Christmas Spirit. Yeah. And then they'd be able to, because they do sh- pop-up shops like for two months for Halloween. Why don't you do two more months? Stay through the holiday season. You get better terms on your lease. I'm sure there's a reason why, because this is yeah. not like a novel thought. I'm, like, yeah. I'm sure there's a reason why. I'm sure they're like, hey, there's so much other competition at like Walmart. Why would we do that? Yeah. I don't know, though. I like that idea because I went in on Halloween because our na- the neighborhood that I live in, we get a ton of kids. So yeah, like we yeah. had to get a ton of candy. We're not going to be that house. So we get a ton, <laughs> of, we get a ton of candy. We put orange lights out on our front porch. You know, we sit out on the front porch for Is an your hour. first Halloween with, as a homeowner? It's second, second. But <laughs> yeah, it's, um, but last year my wife had to work, unfortunately, on Halloween. So uh-huh. I just did the put the bowl out, you know, oh, yeah, and yeah. take one. Um, so this year we were like, let's sit on the porch. Let's like say hi to all the neighbors, <laughs> like, you know, the classic suburban american You're life old dude dude i know <laughs> um but i went into a store on the way home i was like oh maybe i'll see if there's any like fun cheap decorations right yeah. and like everything was already christmas yeah like they took it all away whereas like spirit halloween they could have christmas in the back right and then flip it yeah. after halloween i'm telling you yeah it's a good idea but there's got to be a reason why it happened yeah like totally. they have figured this out like this is not it doesn't take a yeah. rocket science to figure, try to figure that one out. That's an interesting thought. Apparently, I'm not smart enough to figure out why they don't, though. Like, it, Anyways. Yeah, inter- interesting thought. You want a hot take of the day? Hot take of the day. I love it. So I read a um, Business Insider article recently, and it was really cool. It was like a 35,000-foot view of the rise and fall of Peloton. Well, I mean, the the current falling of Peloton, right? Because it was written last month. So they're not like out of business. They're not insolvent. Like They're still in business. But boy, are the waters uh, a shaking right now. Yeah. Um, so I wanted to kind of overview the brief history that is Peloton, get some of your thoughts. I know you're obviously in the fitness industry, you own a gym, so you probably are pretty aware of the product. And uh, it's just kind of interesting looking at the valuations, the stock rising and falling, and then you throw COVID in there. Um, it's kind of a wild ride. So basically, Peloton started in 2012. Do you, what, do, what do you know about Peloton? So I remember when it was going public, which is prior to COVID by a year or two. Yeah. Um, and being afraid as a gym owner, because now all of a sudden you had, when they came out, the valuation was still high, mm-hmm. maybe 10, 20 billion, I forget. But it was a lot of money. And I was like, okay, are we going to be needed if everyone's yep. just going to work out from home? Right. The only hope that I had was the fact that I actually believe it's harder to work out at home than it is going to the gym because you're surrounded by all these things that say do not work out. Whereas when you right. go to the gym, oh, yeah. you are forced mentally to work out. Yep. It's very, like, you have a 99% chance of going to the gym and working out compared to, like, a very low percentage chance oh, yeah. of getting out of bed <laughs> and working out. Oh, yeah. So um, that was my, my, my solace. However, I was afraid. Yeah. And I know we're going to beg on Peloton, but during 2020, 
and 2021, every gym owner is freaked out. Yeah. Nobody thought Peloton was going to do poorly. Mm -hmm. And it was going to be the thing that took over the world. Yeah. Let's just be honest. Yeah. They went out and bought one of the largest manufacturers of gym equipment for us as owners. What what was the brand? Uh, Oh, man, I forget. Um, oh, I, I mean, I wouldn't know any names. Off you top would. Of my head, it, it's like one of the major ones. Yeah, it's not Nordic Track or anything like that. But it's it's not and it's not Life Fitness. It's it's just one of the the most most. Pre- mm-hmm. uh, oh snap! It's right on the edge of my tongue. I should know this because we have yeah. their equipment. Yeah. <laughs> um, but when they bought them out, everyone freaked out in the gym community mm-hmm. because we all buy their equipment totally. And so it's like, okay, now you're buying for your competition, who's taking away members from your club. But furthermore what they, their success had been in 2020 with their bike now could be replicated in rowing machines, weights, mm-hmm. every other machine that we use in the gym. And it's like, oh my word, they could just take everything away from us. Yeah. Um, so I know we're going to bag on them, yeah. but I, along with every other gym owner, was pretty afraid in 2020 when we saw what their stock was doing, mm-hmm. the amount of capital they had. And then when they made an acquisition for $400 million of the piece of equipment, the, the pre-core, there you go. There you go. Okay, yep. The, the, uh, all of us buy them. Yeah. And so w- when they did that, it was just, it, people freaked out of their mind. Yeah. And that acquisition of Precore is, in my opinion, what's going to be the saving grace of Peloton because they bought an actual company, had manufacturing down, had machining down, already built treadmills and all the rest of it to a very high level, mm-hmm. high quality standard. That will be their saving grace. They bought for $400 million, which in my opinion is a steal of a deal. Well, and they, they have a customer base that, that trusts them. Exactly. It's a proven product. And something that they do actually have longevity outside of a right. bike. Like yep. Without that acquisition, that stock that currently is 6 bucks or whatever yeah. is probably a $4 stock or a $3 stock, which is billions of dollars. Like I truly believe that acquisition was so smart on their part. Yeah. Yeah, see, I, I didn't even know that they... I, I didn't know they bought that, so that's interesting. Yeah, like that... It literally like... They were a fad, and they bought out something that gave them some validity mm-hmm. to what they did, and it could give them something outside the bike. Yeah. And so I know you're going to go on yeah. bad on about their stock and everything yeah. else, but yeah. I had to stick up for Peloton for a second. No, I like that. I did buy their stock. Yeah. At Good. forty eight, sold, sold it at, at one thirty. Nice. Before it went to one seventy something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then it crashed <laughs> down. It felt very good. Yep. Very good. Um. But yeah, anyways, go ahead. Yeah. It's a from a consumer's perspective, um, you know, not in the fitness industry like yourself, it's a very sleek product. Yeah. Like I remember the first time I saw it, I was like, oh, that's different. Yeah. Like their their marketing was different. It wasn't marketing a, is different. It was not a traditional like uh, infomercial Bowflex commercial. Yeah. You know what I mean? Where they're like, do this and look yeah. at this before and after. It was like they were selling um, what a lot of people, like really good salespeople are good at is like a lifestyle. They were selling the dream. They were selling the lifestyle. Look how cool you'd be on a Peloton. And I was like, those are kind of sweet. Yeah, it works as long as everyone's staying at home. Right. That's why it took off in 2020. Exactly. It's fantastic to work out at home yeah. when you have to work out at home <laughs> yep. because that's the only option yeah. that you have. So they basically had a, a monopoly on the fact that they were ahead of the curve of all these other products like Tonal, right. Mirror, all these other products that were smart devices. Mm-hmm. And again, in 2020, you just throw a sensor, call it smart, and say it's a home product of any sort, and you made millions of dollars. Let's just be honest. Yeah. But um, yeah. Go ahead, yeah. And, go ahead and rat on Peloton. Yeah. Go no, for we're it. good. <laughs> so I just want to get into guess like a little bit of the history. So we already kind of dove into some numbers, but I want to get like the specifics from this article. So they started in 2012, started selling bikes in 2014. Took them about two years to get a good uh, product out there. Their first runs were very rickety. People didn't feel safe on them. Obviously, they have to go through certain testing and safety standards to be used in the home. So it doesn't, you know, randomly fall over, break apart, whatever. They raised $550 million in original funding. Their valuation at that point in 2014 was $4.1 billion. So their valuation was like through the roof within two years, right? Very, very very rapid evaluation. 2019, they sold over half a million bikes and then they started making treadmills a couple of years before that. So somewhere between 2012 and 2019, started doing treadmills. They wanted to get into the runner's market. And uh, they were able to say, hey, we have over half a million units sold this year. And we also have half a million subscribers because that's when they started rolling out their online studios with their trainers and their classes things of that nature. So um, they were able to really tout these high sales numbers and subscription numbers, which once again, going into like lockdowns, right? Subscriptions are are gold for these companies, right? People are locked in these contracts. They have to use the product, right? So they go public in 2019, IPO, 29 bucks. 
Uh, like you said, it peaked at 171, so you're pretty close there. Peaked at 171, most recent low as of right now, October 2022. Uh, this one's article is written was six bucks, so very very low. So May of 2022, what percentage of their sales increased? Like, what was the total sales increase? Wait, in May 2022. So right after COVID lockdowns, or in the oh, middle 2020. Or sorry, 2020. Yeah, okay. <laughs> you're right. May 2020. Well, I, I've seen I've seen the notes for the show. Yeah. So it's sixty six percent. So yeah, they had a massive spike, right? Yeah. And huge. I think, you know, anyone that's used a Peloton, it's a nice product. It mm-hmm. is a high level, it's a great product. But I've also been on a lot a lot of other commercial bikes. Yeah. And they're just as good. Fair. And so when I used the product prior to COVID, I already knew this was this was a marketing play and they mm-hmm. did a great job at it, but the product itself was not any better. It just wasn't. Like, you get on a Nordic track that's like a $600 commercial bike, mm-hmm. or like the ones we have at the gym that are um, about seven, $800, mm-hmm. they, are, they feel better. Mm-hmm. And they're, they're com- the, the materials are more commercially rated. So the, the product itself was not innovative. The marketing, mm-hmm. they were geniuses at. Yep. And I think what people fail to realize is that the valuation of a business is not based upon sales, and it's not based upon how well it's marketed, and it's not based upon anything other than the expectation of future returns. Mm-hmm. right? How, how much confidence do you have that they're going to return money back on this capital and eventually do distributions, stock buybacks, or the, va- the, the, the growth and the revenue of the company is going up. Mm-hmm. So when you lose out on revenue growth, they lost that in the past year. Right. And then there's no expectation of any profits in the future because they're losing money hand over fist. Oh, yeah. That's gone. Yep. And then now it's brought into question whether or not their product is worth anything. There's nothing for that valuation to stand on. And that's why investors just jump ship yep. and everyone's like oh it must be a great deal it's 95 percent down it's like mm-hmm. no 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 if revenues are declining there's no expectation of profits ever showing up because they're losing money like for every dollar they get they're spending a dollar 40 Th- there's no value to this yep. thing yeah so yeah well their their subscription numbers went off when they laid off all those people though because they all got free subscriptions <laughs> so, so they i mean a bunch of they could tout out. that number yeah that's so funny. that's what the article started with um the whole reason this i guess the the writer of this article was like they literally just announced another 500 layoffs like mm-hmm. as of october 2022 so they were like all right like we got to do the deep dive um and i'll do the total number of layoffs uh this year at the end so you know be thinking of that number if you haven't seen it um so may 2020 66% yeah. increase in sales year over year um, yeah. Okay. So late 2020, their market valuation was, was 34 billion. Yeah, I know. I remember seeing this. Big. It's crazy. Big. So then 2021, the stock crashes 34%. Yeah. What was that? There was something, sp- they missed a quarter, right? Do you yeah. remember what it was? They missed quarter numbers. Yeah. I don't remember exactly off the top of my head what that was. Um, but I, this is more just, I want to show kind of the bumps yeah, okay, in the road. Okay, yeah, yeah. So I don't remember the specifics of that one, but the stock crashes 34%. Then shortly after a couple months later, Amazon and Nike both show interest to buy it. Oh, then it spiked back stock up. Stock jumps 25%. Yeah. Yeah. So people are like, oh, okay. When was it? What month was this? This was just 2021. Okay, um, okay. So late like, 2021. I think so. Yeah. yeah. They, 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 they had already declined a lot in price though. Right. They had already dropped like 70%. Mm-hmm. But I remember this too. Yeah. And I think they eventually will be bought by like an Apple or yeah. Nike. So like, Am- you know, the, you know, the general reaction in the stock market was, okay, a big player like Amazon or Nike partnering with them, buying them out, partnering, yeah. you know, putting their label on it. Like the people had faith in that. Obviously the stock jumped 25% in a couple of days yeah. when those rumors started circulating. Then, Three days after that, the CEO resigns. Yeah, I saw. Stock falls 20%. Yeah, dude, let's go. (laughs) So we're just doing this in 2021, right? You have this booming year in 2020, right? You can't keep up with demand. You're having shipping issues. Just everyone had shipping issues, right? And and during COVID. So they have shipping issues. They have quality issues. But their sales are through the roof. And then they just start doing this in 2021. Yeah. Then after the CEO resigns, three other top execs leave. And in the last year, 2022, 5,200 people have been laid off. Let's go. But none of their trainers because of the subscription. So the training staff hasn't been touched because of the subscription because they're actually getting some money from the subscription. So their mm-hmm. training staff, people who do the virtual classes are still there. But in production and actually the most recent large layoff has been mostly marketing teams mm-hmm. trying to cut costs, essentially. Mm-hmm. They um, have to cut their, cut their way to profitability. Right. Otherwise... Wall Street will have nothing to do with them. Yeah, yeah. So, um, 
This, this is a direct quote from the article. So experts, t- experts told Insider that the company fell prey to the bullwhip effect, sending bi- spending big on logistics while expecting that demand would remain high. When demand cooled, Peloton was left with costly supply chain operations that now require a major overhaul. So essentially, quality control issues were just abysmal. Um, they weren't getting the product to people on time and the stock was going like this demand was going like this and they couldn't keep up with it. And then they just started tanking. Mm-hmm. So it was a, this is a, it's a wild article, man. Yeah. Like it was just really cool to see the whole, the whole picture of it laid out. The fact that they were just boom and then almost bust. And I think they can recover. Like it's a good product. I think overall, um, the interesting thing is losing all those marketing people, you know, the branding is a big portion of what they do. But I think one of their saving graces is because they boomed so big during COVID everyone, if you had Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, you probably saw um, like small clips of their instructors. Dude, some of those instructors like bring the energy Mm -hmm. and they're like hilarious. So I'm like, that's intriguing. Like if they can do kind of that almost grassroots like marketing, like, you know, you do on YouTube, Right, like podcasting, you know, I I thought that was really interesting. But there was one funny thing I did note about some of the stock prices. So most of us remember, Mike doesn't watch a lot of TV. You don't watch a lot of TV. But in 2019, they did the Peloton Wife. Did you ever see that ad? I did, yeah, because of the craziness. Right, yeah, Yeah. because of the craziness. So if you don't know what the Peloton Wife is, essentially, it's like the sad melodramatic tone and like the wife's all sad. And then like, she's like clearly like very fit, like totally fine, whatever. And on Christmas day, she like unwraps the box and like her husband bought her a Peloton and like her whole life changes. So then of course the general political backlash was, you know, like she was perfectly fine the way she was. Why is her husband trying to change her? Like that's not going to make her mental health better, blah, blah, blah. Right. So stock price fell. I'm not going to tell you the percent. When they released the treadmills, they had a malfunction, and a small child actually was killed, unfortunately, on the treadmills. Stock price also fell. Which stock price fall do you think was higher? Oh, the wife one. Yeah. Yeah. 9% after that. Immediately after that ad was released, their stock price fell 9%. When the news of a child being killed by a defective treadmill, their stock price only fell 4%. That was kind of a big yikes, I thought. Just kind of sad. Like... That's yeah. the outrage. There's a lot you could say about <laughs> unpack about just overall yeah. cultural, right? You know, tendencies. Even about the wife thing, and like honestly, we've just we have demonized the desire to become a better version of ourselves because we've just fell in love with the fact that we should just accept everyone for who they are. Yep. And although I I appreciate and would uh, support someone saying that you should. Su- uh, to accept people for who they are. Mm-hmm. I also think that there is nothing wrong with also pushing somebody and saying you can become a better version of right. you. And the moment we lose that and somehow think that just whatever we are today is the best version of ourselves, we become complacent and we will get beat as a country. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we ne- then we wonder why like someone like China just comes, comes roaring along because they're not okay with that. And they're like, no, we're going to put our kids through like 10 hours of math. Yeah. <laughs> Like, because they're not okay learning just their alphabet. We're going to make them learn algebra. Yeah. Like, someone's going to beat you. And this is true in business or whatever it is. As soon as you start demonizing anybody that wants to become a better version of themselves or demonizing an individual that puts pressure on someone else to become better, and that's different than, like, stigmatization of, like, mm. around weight or race or anything like that. That's yep. very different. Right, right. Um, and so I just think that's, that's a little point yeah. there. Yeah. It's interesting you bring that up. There's a great uh, YouTube video, Ray Dalio, Principles, if you've ever read his book or listened to his book. But his YouTube channel is phenomenal. They do great. Like, uh, he does voiceovers, and then he has, like, this – amazing media team that does graphics, but he essentially did a study on the rise and fall of the major empires Mm. post, um, like BC essentially, or or, yeah, post BC essentially. Um, so he's looking at like the Roman empire, the Ottoman empire, um, the British empire, and then the U S empire. He just basically looks at those four. Obviously there are other smaller empires, but he said the commonality, the first thing, um, that starts the cause of the fall of an empire is like lack of education. And I just thought that was interesting because when you look at like the outrage of like, it's just a woman on a bike, but like a kid died and people are more mad about like a woman on a bike. I'm like, are we even like thinking clearly? Like, are we even educating ourselves to like think critically? Like, yeah. I don't know. 
Yeah. I know you have a lot you could say. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe one day. <laughs> it's okay. But. Just as long as it makes them mad and they come to the gym where we have a yeah. ton of weights and equipment they can also get hurt on, we're totally fine with that. Yeah. Just sign up for the membership today. Here it yeah. is, 24 sign- months. <laughs> Let's go. Lock it in, baby. <laughs> cancellation fees. I don't think I got a cancellation fee when I canceled my Anytime Fitness membership. Did you cancel? Uh, how long do you have the membership for? Uh, a year and a half? Know. I don't remember. It would have been over 12 months. Yeah. Yeah. It yeah. was over 12 months. Yeah. After 12 months, there's no cancellation okay. fee. Okay. Good. Fantastic. We're good people. That's what I say. <laughs> we love Anytime Fitness. <laughs> cool. Switch it up. Geography. How, how up to date are you on your Horrible. geography? How many countries are there in the world? Horrible. Like, I have no idea. I think it's like 206. Is it really? I think. I have no idea. That's either. just a guess. I don't have that written down. Dude, I, I don't even know the states, <laughs> the U.S. I don't know, like, capitals. I'm horrible at stuff. I was actually, it was really funny because I've, I've been helping the uh, team in Augusta. We're predetermining, like, territories and everything. Right. And uh, so we just sold another territory that has the same name as an existing territory. Oh, the Bloomingdale one? Yeah, so there's two Bloomingdales now. Bloomingdale, New Jersey. Bloomingdale, Florida. Oh, I knew that was familiar. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I yeah, saw yeah. that coming. <laughs> so, so command center's like, hey, what are we going to do about that? Like, how it's going to make it less confusing. And I was like, well, oh, yeah, we're, so essentially, what are we gonna do? we're just going to put the state abbreviation at the end. NJ? Uh, well, the, they're the original. So do oh. they get, Oh yeah, no, no. they kind of so claim the new it. One the new get... one is FL. Bloomingdale oh. FL at is their email. And then their backslash Bloomingdale FL. Interesting. Okay. So that's what we're doing. I talked to our, our web design team. We're getting yeah. down the rabbit hole here. Sorry. <laughs> but I talked to the web design team. They said it's the best option moving forward. Yeah. But I was like, you know, the folks, the great folks over at Command Center were just like asking me, like, how do we do this? What's a better way to do it? And I was like, well, this is what the web team said. I think it's the, the most basic, simple way to do it. From the consumer's perspective, they want their, you know, local provider to be using their local name. <laughs> their right. email is going to be so long. FL at AugustaLongCareServices.com. long. It is long. Oh, well, we have one North Pensacola is probably the <laughs> longest, I think. I think he owns yeah. it. Um but I looked it up. We have two locations that already have top 10 most common city names in the U.S. Oh, really? You want to try to guess? Oh, man. Like other people that are so potentially going to have So we have two have franchise locations. No, no, no. We have two franchise locations. Each of their territory names are in the top 10 most used city names in the U.S. Is Bloomingdale one of them? Nope. Um, man, I have you no idea. You probably won't guess. Dude. Madison. Okay. Is used Alabama is what we currently Madison, have. Alabama. But I, I, most people think of Madison, Wisconsin. Okay. Is the capital of Wisconsin. Yeah. So Madison, you got that first. Okay. And then Franklin, Tennessee. There are, f- I think it's 42 Franklins in the U.S. What? Yeah. Wow. Dude. Yeah. It's like Main Street. The number one, though. The number one's easy when you think about it. Think about like the United States. You know, like <laughs> our founding. Our Washington? founding. Washington? Yeah, Washington. Really? That's the most used city name in the United really? States. Really? Washington. How many? I was like 80, I think. What? Yeah. It was crazy. So it was like, like one article. Is it I like Lincoln? At. Is that probably another? Like Lincoln? Uh, I don't I don't remember. Oh, I, just, I just look for our franchise location Dude, that's names. Crazy. There's that many Washingtons? Yeah. Dude, I didn't know that. Think about And you. And here's the funny thing. If there's like 80 Washingtons, there's only 50 states. <laughs> so it's like multiple. <laughs> like, it should be like Washington <laughs> state abbreviation number two yeah, like, at Augusta Lawn Care Services. Was, yeah, maybe we should ask the Postal Service how they do it, and then we could do that for our franchise. Just do zip code. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, that's not the geography I wanted to talk about. Have you ever heard? We're going. We're going across the pond. All right, yeah. to Europe. Have you ever heard of Listenburg? Not prior to you sending me the the, con- the country of Listenburg. No, I haven't. So this is very interesting. It was hilarious. It was trending on Twitter a couple of days ago. I don't know if we can have you show share me the topics before. I know because I like to quiz you. I like yeah, because then it's like, do you know? I'm like, well, yeah, I gotta do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. fair <laughs> enough. Um, so a Twitter user, uh, a French Twitter user, I love Twitter. Shout out Twitter. Twitter's free now. Go Elon. Yeah, Twitter's, we're free. What, let, did, he, what did he say? Like, let that sink in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was good. That was wild. We're going to talk about firings with Peloton, oh, laying yeah, people off. Good. Same thing over at Twitter. But anyways. They uh, all need to be fired. You know what I would have done? <laughs> this is my hot take. That's going to be super controversial. Let's go. No one will like me after this. Okay, so this is what I would have done. So <laughs> all of the staff, well, not all of the staff, portions of the staff came forward and wrote a letter to Elon. Oh, we've gotten one of those before. Yeah, I know. Yeah, similar. <laughs> so what I would have done in his case is I would have had an all-hands meeting. I said, or, or like done it virtually and just had a poll. And like, who supports this letter and who does not? I just want to have an understanding of where everyone's at. Mm-hmm. I was just been trying to, I try to like, 
flow in, fly on the radar. And then what I would have done is I would have just put all their names. Like I'm said, just polling. Yeah, just polling. And then yep. I would have showed the results that everyone that put yes, you're fired <laughs> on the spot. That's what I would have done. That was such That was such an entitled letter. Oh, my word. Yeah. It was anti-capitalism. It was anti oh. It was anti-American, that yeah, letter. Yeah, yeah. I Anyways. saw some of the snippets. Yeah, dude. There was a hilarious edit someone did um, because Elon has obviously been on the Joe Rogan podcast. Yeah. And then um, the one of the chief Twitter folks who's like, she's like queen of censorship, basically. <laughs> she got fired. She was like the first person that Elon fired. But she was also on Joe Rogan. And someone did a stitching of Elon firing her live <laughs> on <true>. Joe Rogan. <laughs> and it was hilarious. It got me for a second. I, I was like, there's loved, no way this is real. <laughs> I would have paid to see him read that letter for the first time. Oh. I guarantee you he just laughed. Oh, yeah. Dude, the guy's got all the money in the world. He could have bought Twitter three times over. Oh, yeah. Like... And, and here these people are going to come to you like, we demand this. We demand severance. We demand that everyone have their same hours. We will not bend the billionaires. Like, yeah. It's like, dude, go fly a kite. Yeah. That was a joke. Uh, so back to a user of Twitter. Oh, is that Twitter how we got topic? Yeah. Sorry. It's all good. Hey, that's good. I like this. Unfiltered. Um, so Gas Pardo, at Gas Pardo. He's okay. a French Twitter user. Oh, man. Um, so what he decided, he was just going to, you know, do a meme, right? He He's didn't know. Twit. He was, He's a he, twit. He was, yeah, he, didn't, he wasn't going to do it. He was just going to do a meme, right? You know, yeah. maybe his friends will like it. Yeah. You know, maybe he'll show his mom, right? Yeah. His tweet blows up. Mm -hmm. Within a couple days, he gets 113,000 likes. He gets tens of thousands of shares. He's getting uh, big European news um, news broadcasters like sharing the tweet, the picture. It's hilarious. So he tweets out a picture, um, and it's a map of countries that are part of the EU. And if they're green, if the country's green in color, they're part of the EU. So he basically takes a shape and just slaps it onto the side of Spain and Portugal. Where there's actually an ocean, right? Yeah. Okay, so it doesn't exist. Okay, so it does not exist. So like the Spain and Portugal coast, yeah, like yeah, yeah. Atlantic. Let's go. So he just slaps it on there. Just made it happen. And he just goes, so he just throws it up there. He puts a red arrow pointing to it. And he says, he tweets, <laughs> he tweets with the caption, I'm sure Americans don't even know the name of this country. <laughs> right? So he's just throwing a dig at Americans, which, hey, I'll take it. That's hilarious. I think that stereotype is totally true. If we have any European listeners, most Americans do not know geography. <laughs> like, we have 50 states to remember. We don't remember all your countries. Yeah. <laughs> like, and, we have um, 80 Washington yeah, the United States. 80 Washington. How are we going to remember what your <laughs> country names are? <laughs> totally. So he tweets this out, blows up overnight, like major news media taking it over and like sharing it and it's hilarious it goes across you know american media like i saw it, and it was just hilarious so within three days this is the power of twitter and the internet the country has a national anthem created like someone <laughs> wrote a score for the Let's country go. of listenborg um <laughs> They have a crest. They have a flag. Someone then goes and creates a Ministry of the Interior Twitter and then begin tweeting about how you can get update your passport. Let's go. <laughs> and it's all like, it looks so legit. Like all the screenshots really? look so legit. That's awesome. Even the way he made the map, like when I first saw it, a hand up, <laughs> hand up. When I first saw it, I was like, nothing looks off about that. <laughs> it's jagged. <laughs> like, it looked a little, like I was like, I think that's Spain. Like, <laughs> like I knew where Spain was. Like that's I knew, convert. you know. So it, I, I just thought it was hilarious. Like I love, like I love a good, like clean poking fun meme, like this great joke, bunch of people rally behind it. Like no one's feelings are hurt. Like Americans take one on the chin, whatever. Like I think it's hilarious, but it did get me thinking, especially now that we have Elon who just bought Twitter and he's going to essentially like open it up. He's like, Hey, Twitter is a platform for free speech. Right? That's a big thing that he, he preaches and that he holds to. So it's just funny when you look at, like, the power of social media, the ability to deceive, and within three days, if you took someone who, you know, was on a camping trip for, like, on a, on a self-quest, right, and they were on, like, a camping trip in the woods for, like, two months, and you showed them all that activity on Twitter, they'd believe that's a real country. Like, 100% they would, right? That's how legit it was. So the ability to de deceive at such a quick pace, and then I was starting to think about, okay, well, you have Twitter, you have the metaverse, right? And then, you know, we talk about, like, well, we don't want, like, you know, state media police right because yeah. then we start talking about you know the h-man if you will yeah. um and you know 1940s europe right so it's just interesting what are your thoughts on like policing media policing the metaverse and like just i hate using the word disinformation but yeah. like something like that all in good fun but then it gets you thinking like you could really spread something very fast right yeah. 
I don't know. I think just social media is like put fuel to the fire of how can humans communicate. Like back in the day, there would have just been a map that was written and it would have been shared around and copied and that that European country would have became a country in a lot of yeah. books and textbooks and everything. Yeah. It would have still happened that way. I think the, the, the beautiful thing about the internet is good information and the correct information is just as readily available as the, the disinformation. So what that creates is a, a, a democracy of information, but it not necessarily the right information that gets the loudest voice. Right. What we hear is the loudest voice, and that's what the algorithm is going to going to push. The one with the most likes and the most shares, and that's why it just blows up is because it's just whatever gets the most eyeballs. Mm-hmm. So that's where it gets weird because then it just becomes the more outlandish your story and the crazier it is, the more likes and shares you get. Mm-hmm. So I think I don't really have an opinion on this dif- disinformation thing because I really believe it's just the way that humans communicate. And social media has just been a fuel to the fire of the way that we tell stories. Yeah. And he told a story. It was a good story. And people believed it. Yeah. And fortunately, we have a map that we can also search on Google yeah. and say, it's not there. Yeah. And figure <laughs> that out, right? And so I think with any with any advance in technology and advance in communication ability, the human race is going to have more and more disinformation. However, we're also going to be able to check that information. Mm-hmm. The question is, who gets to take off information is a big subject because can you take their own the correct right. information? And now only the different disinformation stands true. And mm-hmm. that becomes our truth because it exists. Right. And that's dangerous. Right. And so my position on it is I have no idea. I don't want to ever have that job. <laughs> yeah. And I think worrying about it is is almost, like, useless. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, you, the, the, the funny thing is you said, like, it's dangerous when we can't share that information. But then you flip it on, like, let's just say, for the, for the sake of the example, the French government, like, sees this guy's tweet. And they're like, that's dangerous. Yeah. Like, he can't be spreading false information about fake countries in the EU. That's yeah. a security problem, well, right? And then you, like, it's like, well, which danger is worse? Yeah. And if you take the exact same thing that happened with Hunter Biden, right? Like, the, mm-hmm. the whole laptop situation is like, oh, it's different information. And, you know, Mark Zuckerberg comes out and basically says, like, yes, we made sure that that was not shared. Right. Basically suppressed, yep. probably by 90%. And yet it comes out later on that that was true. Mm-hmm. And that is that is definitely a line. However, Facebook owns the app. That is you When you go on that, you need to realize you are getting filtered information. Right. Right. So I think as soon as the internet starts to get filtered like what they do in china that becomes very scary totally because there is no ability to counteract whatever extreme opinion or information is being Mm -hmm. given when you enter the ecosystem of facebook or twitter you have to realize there are filters there is an algorithm you are being shared something that is being uh somehow authored or uh what's the word kind of like uh it's being sorted by something Mm -hmm. right in this case an algorithm or a person who made the algorithm and so you gotta have to realize there's bias in that yeah so yeah. I think what Elon needs to do with Twitter is make a, a new font that you just like tap on the side when you're about to tweet. That's like sarcasm font. Oh yeah. Cause there's, there's no like tone. There's no tone on social media. Right. Like it's awkward when someone says something on social media, you react one way and then they're like, no, like I was dead serious. You're like, Oh, I thought that was a joke. Right. Or the opposite. That yeah. They're joking. But sometimes the funniest thing about it is the, the tonality of not sounding sarcastic. Right, so if I said something to you with a dead face, and to you, and mm-hmm. it's sarcastic in nature, but not in tonality. Right, that's what makes it funny. Yeah. So if you put a sarcastic, sarcastic font on there, it's like, okay, whatever I'm about to read is sarcastic. It loses its humor. Yeah, and sometimes the humor, and that's why it's so stupid with people online. They can't take humor. Like yeah. honestly, humor is being de- like demonetized and deplatformed. Yeah. It's like, look, <laughs> it's just a joke. Yeah, and um. Anyways, that, that's a whole other conversation. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I kind of want to go down that rabbit hole, but I think I think we'll just wrap it up there. Maybe in the future we go down that rabbit hole. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Feel free to drop a like, drop a comment, subscribe. and uh, we'll Don't be let the- your comments be filtered. Yeah. Be unfiltered. We're going to police them, though. <laughs> Anything negative said about our hat, about our appearance, out. Done. Comments filtered. Nothing. Wait, you don't like my hat? <laughs> oh, that's good stuff. <laughs>